Hello, everybody, and welcome to a very, very special episode of the Hallway Wrestling Podcast. I am your host, the man that Janetis forgot, Rian, and joining me today is the hottest free agent in wrestling. I am safe in saying that he is on the radar of many, many wrestling promotions. He's the former Impact X Division and Tag Team Champion, the former Golden Draw. It's Mr. Jay Christ, and he's the IWA Mid-South, Mid-South Heavyweight Champion as well. So, yeah, you, you've done your homework. Thank you. Thank no problem. You. I'm, sure, you? I'm sure Ian will really appreciate that as well. Well, put him on. To, I'd, I'd love to interview more of that wrestler. So anything that uh, anything that uh, I can get. But how are you, sir? That's not about me. How are you? You know, I'm doing great. Uh, I can't complain. I've been hitting the gym. I'm actually, after, uh, after we're done with this, I will be uh, heading to the gym to hit back. Oh yeah, well, it's. Um, I was I was actually uh, supposed to be headed to a show in Tennessee, but it got canceled late last night. So I don't know. You know, I figured, hell, might as well just hit the gym again. Yeah, you were telling me that you were going to be on the way to Tennessee. So, um, but uh, how, what's the weather like over where you are in America? Are you still, you seem to be wrapped up in a few layers. It, it's not quite as warm as we all think with America, is it? No, it's not that warm. I mean, I'm, the sun's shining, like the, uh, you know, the birds are singing. That's what I enjoy. Uh, I love doing my interviews outside. Uh, plus, my cat uh, loves to have uh, his FaceTime too. Freddie Meowkery just oh, loves, yeah. I'm, loves I'm... to be. Loves to be on camera. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm great friends with uh, the Ringsiders who had you on, and you were talking about your cats on there. So it's nice to see yeah. the Freddie Meowkery has made his... Uh, made his uh, impression early get- every time every time he sees he's like oh uh dad's out here i'm gonna have to come get some loving so better get better get himself over you know he knows what to do hey he's got a cool name too so why not why not yeah um man i i was telling you off 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 um off recording that like i was a huge fan of yours when like impact kind of when i first started getting into impact around the 2017 and 18 i was kind of late to, I, I watched all the old stuff but like kind of the new stuff and uh, we'll talk about the tag team matches later, but uh, it's just great to see that uh, you were, we won't go too much into what happened, but you were through no fault of your own. It was uh, an awkward situation you were put in. And it's really, really cool to see that there's like a fire, lit, lit, lit a fire under you since you were, you like your contract ended with impact and there's a chip on your shoulder in the best way possible. How does it feel to, is that what, is that how it feels to you? Cause you're hitting the gym. It feels like you're really trying to prove a point and it's really cool to see. What is it like from your perspective? Well, to be completely honest, I, I kind of, um, I should have been doing this the whole, the whole time. I should, like, I, I just got, uh, just got lazy to be completely honest. It was just, just became, uh, lazy and, uh, not hitting the gym, you know, injuries and so on and so forth, you know, and, uh, I, I wanted to spend as much time as I could with, uh, my girls and stuff. So, you know, uh, for me, you know, when, when, when I'm at home, I kind of just turn wrestling off, you know, that's, so it's like, uh, that, that's, that's why I'm just now starting to open up to do interviews and so on and so forth that 18 years, you know, been in this business. So, you know, I, there's not that many interviews, uh, of me out there, but, uh, but yeah, it did light a, a fire under my ass. And I also was looking at uh, pictures of myself and mm-hmm. I started seeing uh, a, a big belly from, uh, drinking a lot so i uh just i just stopped drinking and uh went started killing the gym and next thing you know i i went from i think i was like 221 at my uh heaviest that was around march 16th you know the when the pandemic like when america shut down yeah uh when they when they went uh on that uh that whole thing so it was like march 16th I looked at myself in the mirror and I got on the scale as 121 pounds. I was like, well, that can't, uh, yeah, that I can't do that. So, um, that lit a fire and I just started, uh, I started hitting the gym and then with everything, uh, started, uh, started developing, happening and then, and all that, uh, started a team with, you know, with, uh, what impact, uh, stuck me with. And then I, uh, uh, once, once of, uh, I think July hit and all that happened and, uh, everything got cut. It, it lit an even bigger fire under my ass. So I started hitting two a days 
So that's like in July, I started hitting two a day. So uh, I couldn't do I, 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 I'm about to go out for a run after this in my shorts in Ireland and I'm fucking shitting myself. So fair play, <laughs> fair play to you. Like I, 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 the only way I can do a run is I have an app that is like a zombie apocalypse. So I'm trying to make it fun for, I'm trying to make it fun for myself, but man, it, so, fair play. so I started hitting two a days and then I jumped on the scale um, yesterday and I was uh, 178. Point four. So, oh, you're gone. Uh, I, I uh, went from 221 pounds to 178. So, well, there's a J. Chris training done. program. There, there, there's, there's a side business for you. The J. Chris training program. You could sell a lot of those off. The, off, hey, off the maybe, of those maybe, you know, maybe. <laughs> I, I, I have a lot of help with myself too. Uh, Thermo One uh, has helped me out a lot, and my buddy uh, Sean Bond, which is a personal trainer, and he's just uh, jacked to the all gills. Uh, he's, yeah. he's helped me out a lot. So I've, I've had, a, I've had, a, I've had some help. I can't say it's uh, been all by myself. It's, it's, it's but, I mean, I've got my lazy ass up and <laughs> got to the gym. And that's that, what matters. Yeah, that's the same with a lot of people during the lockdown. And you no, I, I'm glad I, I'm glad we caught wind there because the interviews that you've been doing, I've been really enjoying seeing yeah, you're happy and like you're really, really motivated. It's I've never seen it's it's quite scary for a lot of for a lot of wrestlers that you're coming for all their belts. That's uh I well, can't wait. It, it, here's the thing that I'm looking at too. It's like, you know, not only am I a free agent, I would love to, you know, go on any television company, but beyond that, like I started thinking like there's no really top independent guys. They're all signed. Yeah. We need we they need, so they, like, they that's, need someone. That's for the taking as well. So it's like, you know, like I, there's a, there's a lot to be motivated for, you know. So yeah, and the, the future I feel is very bright. It is and each way it goes. Yeah, and um, I've seen, I've heard your reference. You said about your children there. You're, you've got a family. You've got two two daughters. Uh, if that serves me correctly, how big of a motivation? It's quite an obvious question, but how big of a motivation is it to kind of be that kind of role model for your, your family and kind of provide for the family as well and kind of show like show yourself in the best light and just go full. Uh, how much of a motivation are they in in, in what you're doing right now? Oh, absolutely. Like everything I do is for them. I think every parent, you know, anyone that has a child, it's like uh, when <laughs> I, I, I always crack it, it cracks me up every time I, you know, if I, if I post a, uh, you know, I'm on the scale and I've lost, you know, this much weight yeah. and, you know, uh, you know, hecklers would get on there like, oh, nice uh, toenail polish. Well, you, you have a five-year-old daughter. And if you don't have uh, your toenails painted, there's something wrong with you. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So everything I do is for my children. Like, I, I believe every every good parent feels that way. So, yeah, motivated as hell to, you know, provide for them. That's why I'm working my ass off uh, during the pandemic. That's why I am the IWA world champion and they run every Thursday drive three hours you know to uh to the show uh every Thursday and then then uh, I'll jump on the road normally Friday Saturday and Sunday uh but uh during the uh the second wave of shutdown I lost you know a lot of bookings so well, hopefully be those will come back yeah hopefully Biden's Being got optimistic. hopefully Biden's got, got got some plans in place to kind of control the virus and yeah I can't get, wait get us back in get get us back in good shape um i love when you were talking about how versatile you are because i completely see it we'll talk about cgw in a while but just about that versatility you can work any style of match we've seen you work hardcore matches we've seen you work barbar massacre we've seen you work just the absolute classic tag team matches we've seen you work technical matches the x division as well so how how happy are you that you have all this to bring so when you go to a company they don't they know that they can put you in any situation and you can give it a 10 out of 10 and smash it out of the park. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's always kind of been my, uh, forte, you know, starting out, um, you know, very early on in, uh, 2002. <laughs> wow. Uh, but, uh, yeah. Wow. Started in 2002. That's crazy. I was born in 2001. I'm sorry to age, but I was born a year before you started wrestling. That's mad. <laughs> But uh, I've, I've always uh, always wanted to uh, fancy myself of uh, being able to do any style uh, that that uh, was able to uh, that was presented before me, and uh, uh, I was always told um, 
uh, you know, by, by my coaches and my trainers that, uh, if a promoter asks you to do it, you do it, Yeah. you know, kind of the old, old way, old school way of doing things. Like I'm saying old school way and <laughs> 2002, <laughs> but, uh, uh, but yeah, uh, that, that was just like, I feel like I was kind of like the last of a dying breed of, uh, the, of, uh, being brought up the old school way of uh, of wrestling like um being 130 pounds starting out in a man's world was uh pretty scary in hwa <laughs> yeah i, I uh, yeah I, I i feel i feel feel great and everything's gonna be i i feel i hope you know coming back to the pandemic circling back to that I just hope everything starts to uh, open up and we can start to uh, do some international travel. Like a, like like what you said earlier on, I got this fire and this chip on my shoulder. And, you know, being able to do any style and every style, I think that just proves how versatile I am and how, um, how I can bring anything to the table to any company. Yeah, I... I, I or independently. I'd love to see you in Ireland personally, but... Well, well, hopefully that'll happen. I, I know you. I, I... I can't hear you. We let our audience know when we have to. We, we don't claim to be professional, so there was a cut there, and Jake's oh, back. No problem. Jake's back in a different, different, different location, and uh, I think I was asking you. You were talking about wanting to travel, and like. I, I was just saying I'd love for you to come to Ireland because there's so many good promotions and so many good wrestlers over here. And then uh, so... I would love to go to Ireland. That yeah. that's a that's a bucket list for me because I haven't I haven't uh, worked in Ireland. Yeah, because I'm wrestling in Ireland. I I passed through. Yeah. You know, I've, you know, but uh, I've not I've not actually have uh, wrestled, and I would absolutely uh, enjoy. I think I would enjoy myself a little too much in Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> you might you, you might you might break that alcohol no alcohol rule if you came to Ireland. <laughs> maybe maybe. Uh, maybe. But, I but... Don't know. I'm, I've been pretty uh, pretty strict, and I haven't uh, I haven't had a drink and out al- I haven't had an ounce of alcohol since October seventeenth. So that's a I've been pretty good. That is a very big commitment and fair play. Um, but in terms of like, I, I had to ask you this question as an Irish person in a ring of honor, you had a team called Irish Airborne. Where, where did that name come from? Is that links to Ireland or was that just plucked off the wall? There, no, no, no. It's uh, there, there's a little, you know, a little trace of tiny little bit of, you know, family, you know, uh, ties you know through ireland but like i've never ever been to ireland so i never claimed to be irish irish but uh you know being a kid and loving the boondock saints (laughs) you know it was i think it was mostly due to the uh, boondock saints movie and having just a little bit of just touch of like i have like a touch of scott irish in me yeah you know uh, you know that and that's not real I, I i think i've had this conversation um with a couple irish uh lads at a, a pub uh when i was when i was in scotland uh, i had the same conversation so i never really uh like being the irish airborne you know uh, i think it was mostly just be, because the boondock saints movie because we we had the rosaries and everything and uh and all that yeah um but uh, as I was saying, versatility and one of them, one of my favorite promotions to watch whenever there's a YouTube match is CZW. And you put yourself through the ringer in CZW. We've seen, we've seen some serious like blood spilt and blood, sweat and tears and uh, some crazy matches in there. What was it like working for a company like that, where every time you went to work, you knew there was going to be blood spilt and you were going to have to like pull thumbtacks out of your back oh, did, did, did that feel what's the what's the what's the pain threshold like for something like that well how do you how do you prepare for that you you can't prepare like uh there was okay it was when when drake younger um he he him and i, I he was the first guy i rode with to czw because he was from indianapolis so he drove from dayton it was just the two of us and i i wrestled at czw it was uh best of the best weekend it was uh, it was me versus Ar Fox versus Sammy Callahan in the three way, and it was it was at the ECW arena. It was awesome. Like if you if you have an opportunity to check out that match, I can't remember the exact year, 
because uh, I've been hitting the head and done you know too many <laughs> yeah. barbed wire ECW death defying <laughs> matches or death death matches you know we shouldn't say death defying but uh, for death matches uh, um, wrestling guy like Danny Havoc you know being oh, a guy yeah. you know being guys uh, being around guys like that uh, Sammy uh, Drake you know they. Like I said, Drake was the first one when I had my first rope, uh, no rope barbed wire match. I was like, "Hey, man, any, any, uh, anything that I should know? Do you got you got any advice for me?" Mm-hmm. He's like, uh, "Hit the ropes like you would normally." He's like, "That's all I have." Got to commit to so, it. Like you can't, you can't. Uh, yeah, you got to commit. You you can't. Uh, you know, you can't prepare for me. Like, I don't like to prepare uh, for matches like that. I like to just go out there and do it. And that's, it's kind of like that with every match. Uh, I, I'm not one of those guys that like to do A to Z. I like to, I like to fill in the blanks. I like to, to be honest, I like to call it out there. That yeah. That's me, you know, yeah. but that's getting a little bit, uh, <laughs> a little, you know, technical, but like, what, what is too, too technical? Yeah, what is the uh, what's the craziest spot you've been involved in? What's the what 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 was the spot where you look back and it's like, how the fuck did I do that, or why the fuck did I even try? There's every time I step into the ring. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, you do go hell for leather. Um, um, every time I step into the ring, but to be honest, there's not really um, there's not a there's not a spot or there's not a. Uh, uh, a memory that sticks out to me that's like man i wish i didn't do that uh yeah i've been hurt you know i've done two, i think i've done four or five no rope barbed wire matches and i've done uh, a bunch of uh barbed wire board matches um i've wrestled alex cologne which i, th- I think is the best best death match wrestler going today i've yeah. uh, just him uh at revolver i think in 2019 before all uh before the pandemic and all before COVID 19 he's you know all that stuff uh me and me and alice cologne was spilling blood in a pro wrestling revolver in dayton ohio uh in a barbed wire boards match uh but um looking back like i, I think you know every scar and every you know little little drop of blood i've spilt uh, has been worth it to me in a sick uh statistic sadistic way yeah um one of my one of the one of the most innovative matches i've ever seen um i don't think yeah, you must have been in the company at the time i just want to get your thoughts on it the concrete jungle death match i remember that time around when they did that match when the when lax and the, and the ogs did that match I, I i was wondering if you were in the arena or if you I, i'd say as a, as a as a czw wrestler you must have been like that's a crazy match that i that would you ever do a match like that without any just you, boards there, I, at this at this point after doing uh, ultimate x because to me ultimate x was the scariest match i've ever done. what was that like actually let's go on to that because i love that ultimate was scary. X. it was scary as hell like i would rather have done you know barbed wire fire you know boards you know wrestle alice cologne for some odd reason jump like the wire like jumping up on the wires and actually scaling across the, the wires it was just it's i don't know it's it's uh it's nothing like anything i've ever experienced in uh in wrestling and i've done i've done it all i've, I've done ladder matches i've done you know death matches i've done done panes of glass you know there's there's nothing i haven't done as far as uh matches go in wrestling but um you know the, the ultimate x match was was the one that was scary and i was just looking up like that seems to be a lot higher than what it normally is for some other reason it just seemed a lot higher and you're asking it them like, like ma- ma- make sure the ropes are set make sure those ropes are tight please <laughs> you're probably oh no up. no i didn't i didn't have this they're professional i didn't have to say <laughs> anything like that but uh uh i i didn't have no worries about that it was just uh it was just a scary match yeah and um you've referenced him in an interview before um speaking of like extreme there doesn't come much more extreme than um john moxley and you were talking about how you guys crossed paths in your early stage of your career um first of all what was what what was it like uh, back then and what's the prospect of facing this john moxley now because this john moxley and this jay chris they're the two most fired up people in wrestling the two people that are one of the proof moxley is the 
is the exact same. He's here with his promos and he is loving life in AEW and obviously the door is always open. What, what, what would it be like to revisit that Moxley versus Jay Chris, but with you guys fired up as well? well? Um, I guess that, like you said, uh, uh, in a, in an interview, uh, you know, it always, uh, you know, um, John Moxley gets brought up to me, you know, how, what, you know, what would, I think in that interview, there's like, uh, what, what would it be like to wrestle John Moxley or have you ever wrestled John Moxley or something like that? And, uh, I went into it, but, uh, yeah, uh, we're just, we're two different people right now. And like you said, you know, he's fired up, I'm fired up. Uh, I, w- I would, would love to, uh, get in the ring and, uh, and, you know, do some work with him, but, uh, yeah, like I don't sit around and think about who I want to wrestle. Yeah. Uh, I, I, when I'm at home, I kind of just turn wrestling off, you know what I mean? And this is, this is a rare opportunity because like I said, I was supposed to be in Tennessee on the road and I, I was going to be driving doing this interview. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, like this is a, you know, um, I take a little little bit of time out of my day to do uh, some interviews here and there. Uh, but as far as uh, when it comes to me, when it when I get when I get home, I kind of just turn wrestling off and I just focus on family life and you know uh, hitting the gym. Yeah, but that's... it's boring. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, but but it'll it'll be worth it in the end once we get out of this pandemic. And um, and I remember as I was telling you before we started, like my introduction introduction into full introduction to impact was 2017, 2018. I don't I don't enough think enough people realize that that was that tag division and that three-way kind of oh we had OVE, we had Pentagon and Phoenix, and we had Santana and Ortiz. And the matches that were happening every week, we'd all also throw in Tommy Dreamer and Ryan over Tommy Dreamer and and we'd say say saving might come back for one or one or the other, but and then we had so many tag teams, but those three in particular, what was it like matching up with them every week, knowing that the matches were just gonna be <laughs> crazy? I I love I love wrestling all those guys. Every single one of those guys you mentioned, we we always enjoyed it, and we it, we set the bar so high, so it was like, well, we gotta go top it, you know? Like, oh fuck, <laughs> we're gonna go top it. We gotta go top it, you know? And I, I think that anyone that takes pride in the work and that's a professional, uh, you know, I, I think you know thinks that same has that same mentality of you know, uh, of having, building a legacy and, and, you know, coming in and uh, working with LAX. And then when uh, Penta and uh, Phoenix came in, it was just, it just blew, blew it wide open. It was just, it was a lot of fun. And, you know, it was, like I said, we set the bar here, so we had to go here. Then we had to go here. And it was just, I don't know. I felt those matches was, was amazing. I enjoyed, I, I enjoyed my time at Impact. They, they, they made me grow as a human being and I've, I've loved them for that. Yeah. Cause like they, you guys were main eventing. Like it was, it was like, you guys were the main, like the tag division was the main draw when um back then and you guys were like, well, we have the draw, draw, yeah, the draw, draw, draw. draw. And then speaking of that, that and, yeah. And then we had speaking of that, the golden draw, the X division title, how did that come about? And obviously we'll talk about Don Callis and everyone later, but, the golden draw came came in and you were the the x division title was put on around your waist and then you had that thing with like like sammy sammy i guess wasn't too happy that you were that you were get your ego was going up what was it like well, to do I think, I think sammy was happy for me. <laughs> what what do you th- what was it like to kind of express to go to, to have all those matches with um with those people like in that x division which was so so like deep and then you could kind of express yourself as a singles wrestler which is what you want to do now again. So, like, well, yeah, like? I, I think the little bit of taste of what you've seen in the X division, my, my little bit of run there singles uh, is, is just uh, the little peak of the mountain of, uh, of what, what's come, what's going to become of Jake Christ. Um, and to be completely honest, uh, wrestling guys like Rich Swan, you know, in the X division was, was amazing. Like I, I, I love wrestling with Swan. He's, he's taught me every time I get in the ring with Swan, he teaches me something, you know, I learned something new. He's amazing. It's amazing at what he does. He's an amazing performer. He's an amazing wrestler, amazing human being in and out of the ring. Like, and he's, Swan, and he's proving it. So 
and he's proven it now as the champ, and he mixed him up with Kenny oh, Omega God. recently. He's world champ, bro. He's world champ, and he just fought Kenny. Bigger than that. Yeah, um, and I don't know if you've been watching it much, but the AEW and Impact relationship that must make you feel really happy for a lot. You you, you know a lot of people oh, in yeah. the company, and and I, 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 I we all yeah. Sorry, sorry. Before you before you, I, I just want to make make it clear. You've made it clear that there's no hard feelings between you and Impact. You've a lot. You left a lot, a lot of friends. And it was just, it was, it was, it was just, it was suited both your agendas to leave. But it, it must be really cool to see the uh, the relationship and the kind of intermingling storylines that are going on right now. Absolutely, I, I I like just being, I like sitting out and watching uh, all wrestling. I'm I'm watching every wrestling uh, promotion right now. It's just, you know, uh, MLW, uh, New Japan, uh, yeah. WWE. Uh, um, impact all elite i'm rest, i'm watching them all uh, nxt i'm i'm watching everything you know and and all the top independent wrestling companies as well like i've you know i've taken a lot of uh time uh you know especially during a pandemic that i think everyone has nothing but time so i've just been watching nothing but wrestling we're watching a lot of uh uh early uh Attitude Era, uh, WWF stuff. Uh, I've been watching a lot of uh, Muda stuff, you know, from the oh, 80s yeah. stuff. So there's there's been a there's been a lot of things I've been watching. So I've, I've you know uh, been taking a lot of time that I that I haven't been in the past uh, in recent years and and watching a lot of wrestling. Yeah, I'm gonna talk about you talk about MJ, NJPW. Um, NJPW Strong is something that you were you talked about in an interview. And I think that that just that just seems like a great fit. I I I'd love to see matches with the likes of yourself and Filthy Tom and Fred Rosser and all them. It must be really cool to see that like there's a gateway into New Japan through America, and you can kind of work with the kind of American new like Shibata and all them, and then kind of with 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 the view of going to Japan. That must be really exciting for you as well. That'd be great. I've I've uh, I've had uh, five tours of Japan under my belt, uh, like in my earlier before we got signed uh, to Impact Wrestling. So, uh, you know, I, I've, I would love, obviously, would love to go back to Japan, and that's obviously a huge goal of mine to get back to uh, Japan. As I was uh, just re- just remembering uh, talking to uh, my uh, my stepfather's having a memory of talking with him. Uh, He's, he's passed away for a few years now, but I just had a memory just laying in bed uh, 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 late one night. Uh, it was a few months ago, and uh, uh, I remember talking with him as a, a little child, about seven or eight years old. And he always asked me, he said, uh, you know, what, what, did you, what do you want to do when you grow up? And I said, uh, I either want to be a rock star or a uh, pro wrestler. You're both and, now. <laughs> and, he, and he goes, uh, well, if you want to be a pro wrestler, you know, uh, what, what, what do you want to do? And, he, and I, you know, being a, a young kid that didn't had a speech uh, problem, I said, uh, I want to ride my motorcycle to Japan. And so <laughs> oh. so uh, I'm kind of, um, I kind of, you know, um, that's kind of a kind of a memory that I'll always have of of me and my stepfather, uh, and um, I, I kind of uh, kind of uh, clicked with me right there. Like, huh, maybe I should, uh, you know, make more of an effort to uh, get get to uh, Japan. So once things start uh, to open up, and, and that that's the big thing. Once once the pandemic, and oh. you know. Uh, once once shows are going to be allowed to run at full capacity and everything you know gets to a, a semi-normal basis i think uh you know uh things are going to hit the fan even more than what they have now oh man I, you're going to be everywhere um do you mind doing a bit of quick fire if i name a promotion and you kind of name someone off the top of your head that kind of that, that, that you'd like to face are you yeah, sure, man. Uh, I don't know how good I'm gonna be because completely, uh, like, unless it's older stuff. Uh, but, like, well, let, but, but, but let's go all time. Let's go all time. We'll, we'll go from. Okay, let's we'll, do it. We'll go from promotions and we'll we'll see. Right, WWE. Uh, Shawn Michaels. Shawn Michaels, yeah. Um, Shawn Michaels, Undertaker, Triple H, uh, Ricochet. <laughs> Rick, oh, oh, look at that! Look at oh. that, Rick. 
Okay. Woo. Ooh, the there's a moment. Back in the uh, ricochet, Adam Cole. Uh, I have a, I have a ton of friends. Uh, even like Kurt Skets, Kurt Sallion. I would love to wrestle oh. Kurt again. He's doing great stuff you on know? NXT. I'm so happy yeah, to see him on uh, NXT. Johnny Gargano, like the list. Adam Cole again. You know, because we we crossed paths in CZW. I'd love to cross paths with them. But yeah, uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, no. I like. I love. I love. I love when a wrestler marks out like like a fan because it's because that's what everyone is at heart. We're all fans, but some yeah, some some fans turn into wrestlers. Another promotion that I'm loving at the moment, and they're having a. I've spoken to Kerry Silk and and um and uh Ella, Leon San Giovanni from Ring of Honor. What about Ring of Honor? Ring of Honor seems to be like the same as you. There's a fire lit under the whole company's ass. What what, what do you th- what do you see in Ring of Honor at the moment? I would love. To uh, dip my toes in Ring of Honor, I would love, I would love to, I would love to wrestle Shane Taylor Ring of Honor. I think that'd be awesome. Jay Lethal would be amazing to wrestle uh, Ring of Honor. Uh, like and, and go old school, go on the old school Ring of Honor. Like back, you know, uh, I, I like because I, I wrestled in Ring of Honor in 2006. So, you know, yeah. so uh, like for me, I would love to go back and wrestle like a 2004 Joe. Or oh, like, a, shit. like like a CM Punk, you know, uh, Cole Cabana, you know, I've wrestled him a, a bunch of times, but I'd love to go back where he was doing like the technical British style stuff in Ring of Honor. Would love to go back and wrestle Brian Danielson in Ring of Honor. Oh, one the be- bad, the one the best of all time. Uh, and James James Gibson in Ring of Honor would be amazing. Jamie Noble, a, aka Jamie Noble. Del- delirious as well. You mentioned Delirious and like Delirious that. would be amazing. Like I've, I've, like last time I wrestled him was like in HWA in like 2000 and like early 2000s. So I would love to wrestle Delirious again. Yeah, and then you you talk about Joe in 2004, and then you talk about you're the Dude, IWA. Joe- you're the do- yeah. you're the IWA Mid South Champion. Joe Necro Butcher is oh. uh, that's that's a match. Um, and then jo- Joe Kabashi is just Joe Kabashi yeah, is just. I was getting insane. ready to mention. I was just getting ready to mention Joe Kabashi. One of my favorites. Just, yeah, just amazing match. Kabashi is one of my one of my top ten favorite wrestlers of all time. Yeah, we have a friend who like is like a casual wrestling fan, but he loves chops, and we showed him. We showed him the Kabashi match where it's just like sweat and baby oil oh, flying out the yeah, chops area. And he's like, not, yeah, it's like it, it like that gets people, if that's your thing, like it gets people into wrestling. And that's like a question I, I always like to ask. If there was like, if, if someone who didn't watch wrestling came up to you and was like, Jake, you have one match to get me in, invested in wrestling. What kind of match would you stick on for them? What, 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 what do you think grasps people in most in wrestling when they get into it? Well, uh, it, it's, it's crazy that you uh, asked that question because that's it's what I based my whole look on, mm-hmm. like, uh, like, because uh, like the traditional, you know, hey, which is fine, you know, trunks, kick pad, or trunks, traditional trunks, boots, knees, you know, you got the skin in between and it's just the trunks, like that's how I started out. Uh, uh, and that, that's kind of like how, um, I, not that it was, you know, uh, a rule, but it was kind of like an unwritten rule of like that's it's kind of how you you started out in wrestling and uh back back in back when I was starting out. So uh um once once I broke that mold from that, um I had a buddy that I was working with. He was uh his name was Prentice and um I kept asking, I was like, I worked with this guy for like 10 years side by side. I was like, dude, like, come watch me wrestle. Come watch me wrestle. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's like, nah, man, nah, it's not my thing. I was like, nah, come watch me wrestle. So he finally said yes. And um, I-, I couldn't wait to get back to work that next morning because I wanted to, you know, hear his feedback. I wanted to hear what he thought because he wasn't a wrestling fan. Yeah. Yeah. He- like he 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 watched wrestling like like it like we all did, you know, when we were kids. And then when he got to like ten or eleven, he fell off of wrestling and just never came back. Uh, so he's like, you know, in his mid thirties at this time. So I'm like, dude, come watch me. So he finally came. Um, and like the next morning, I was like, dude, what'd you think? I was like, Prince, what'd you think? He's like, I'll be completely honest. When I came rolling up into the building. And I saw you coming out. And at that time I had like 
green trunks with like they were like silver and gold uh, they had like a cross on the side but they were black silver gold uh they're, they're really really cool tights now that i think about it uh but uh he goes uh, as soon as i seen you walk out of the building you told me which way to park i just busted out laughing out loud because like to normal people wearing trunks you know wearing you know um spandex was was odd to him yeah you know it was funny to him so he was like you know i i, I thought it was funny I, I turned to the couple guys that i was uh, with he's like man we about to be into some shit boys and uh <laughs> they came in he's like then you then you wrestled and he's like the way you flew around and the way you you flow he's like you made you turned me into a wrestling fan yeah. So like that kind of that kind of clicked to me. So from there on out, I kind of switched, you know, from wearing like the traditional wrestling gear to wearing the pulling it off the rack, you know, at like you know Rue Twenty One, where wearing stretch, you know, pants, you know, doing the whole the button up uh, uh, shirts and and the vest you know that, that me and sam low-key kind of stuff yeah lo, kind yeah. of low-key kind of we were doing yeah we we're doing low-key like low-key kind of did that uh before us but like with the skinny jeans and the vest and stuff like that that's that's kind of why that morphed into that like i took that that conversation i had with a, a, a fan that or a person that wasn't a wrestling fan you know and he was like i i literally was laughing because you were shirtless <laughs> And you had spandex on. Yeah. You know, the normal people, that's, you know, he was like, that's, that was funny to me. And not like, I think uh, wrestlers are so numb to that where it was like, uh, <laughs> you, you, like we get so numb to, to wearing the spandex and stuff where it's like to normal people, that's weird. Yeah, it's like in the bubble. It's in the bubble of wrestlers. It's, it's cool. It totally is. It's in the bubble of wrestling and wrestling fans, and which it's cool to us. But like people that are out outside of that bubble, they're just like, oh, that's weird and odd. Like, why are these guys, you know, shirtless rolling around? So I kind of, I kind of uh, just went to my or um, kind of went to, uh, from from there from from that conversation I had with the with the guy that I worked with for I ended up working with him for 15 years <laughs> but uh he I, I kind of took that one little conversation that that he told me and I was kind of like yeah I think I'm going to kind of change the traditional way of uh the way I was at that time because I was just wearing the the boots uh uh, knee pads and trunks i'm kind of like yeah i want to want to do something different yeah Just so uh, yeah and like different as as we've seen load like the characters and different is good because we've seen this year with the cinematic matches like that that that, that like if you change it up you might bring in an i think a lot of those cinematic mod matches might have brought in an audience i i showed the non-wrestling fan the stadium stampede from AEW, and they were like oh shit this is pretty fu-. like what did you think of the cinematic a revolution this year like the you- one we did the one we did in the woods was amazing with eddie edwards yeah OBP that was- in the woods with eddie Ed- and sammy callahan and re- versus sammy Cal- and eddie edwards and and in the woods it was amazing it was amazing yeah. a cinematic match like I, I was a part of that i couldn't could have been more happy and ecstatic to be a part of that. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm all for the cinematic matches. I think they're entertaining. The one with AJ and Undertaker was just flat out amazing. Yeah, it was very like great. And then you have this like the crazy John Cena and the Fiend, and you just it's uh-huh. it's it's oh just, yeah, John Cena and the Fiend was was amazing too. That must have been a mark out moment for people with like the NWO and stuff. I wasn't like that era, but I still okay. like marked out like um but yeah now before i let you go because you're gen- very very generous with your time and I'm, I'm very appreciative of it um where do you see 2021 um for for uh um, if if covid is as we've all we've, we've been referencing Man, that's if, the biggest thing it's 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 all on covid if if everything gets restricted i think you know where your question's going with 2021 where do i see myself going yeah. if 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 things are if things you know get lifted up and to be honest i i don't know i don't know yeah. where i go i don't know where i want to end up i like being the free agent i like uh I, i'm the kind of guy that uh likes to go wherever the wind takes me so Reese whichever Burrow. way the wind blows i'm gonna go and you know whoever calls or whatever like 
I, I'm gonna go. So you're gonna, you're, you're I'm, gonna take it all. You're gonna take it I'm all. Gonna take it all. I got. It, it's all there for the taking, and you know why not me? Why can't it be me? Why not me? Right? Well, exa- exactly. And uh, hopefully we get to sit down and have a conversation again when you have about ten belts around your waist. It'd be and, uh, great to sit down and have a conversation with you in person in Ireland. Oh, that'd be amazing. I mean, whenever you, when it, when if, if that ever happens, well, I'm, I'm sure once the pandemic is over, they'll be on the phone to you because, as as we said, the hottest free agent in 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 the, in the company. Sure. I'm down, brother. I'm down. Let's let's Love do it. That. Let's do it. But um, before you leave, obviously you get to plug whatever you have going on. Any any merch, any 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 handles, everything. Just lay it all on i have a, I have a couple t-shirt designs uh out but uh i i won't uh be passing those out unless we're at a show um i, I kind of got a, a little special uh little run going like during the pandemic if, even if i feel like going out i haven't even been going out to the merch table during the pandemic so it's all it's it's the pandemic has slowed down everything i should probably sell them online mm. but uh uh you can always hit me up on uh twitter at the jake christ instagram at the jake christ i keep it simple baby yeah exactly simple dj at the jake christ keep it simple and then go complicated in the ring <laughs> there you go <laughs> there we go, go in the ring yeah that's it no i don't think i don't think i'd ever spit in somebody's face uh, ever again <laughs> oh no yeah that's gonna be interesting after the pandemic to see some sort some uh some um some like some people I've, like <laughs> taking hands four years ago so this is you know kind of been a blessing where i'm kind of like hi oh, yeah elbows <laughs> but yeah. uh yeah that has been this has been an amazing conversation thanks for coming on um Thank i've you. i've been the man that you know forgot rain and i've been joined by the free agent jay christ the ma- remember that name and watch the matches because he will be all over the place once this is over and as we say at the, uh, at the end of every episode of the High Wrestling Podcast, beware the draw is coming and he's coming, coming for all the belts.